In a cloud first or database, the data are stored in form of a collection of documents. The individual documents represent the individual records or entries to be stored. Now here I am assuming that you have created a Firebase project and added it to your Flutter project. If you have not done that, you have to do that. You can do that after watching this video. I will put a link to a tutorial in the description below. So here you can see an example of a collection named shopping list. Inside I have added a few documents. Each of these documents represent the items of a shopping list. If you click on one of them, you will notice the actual data of the individual items. So here at this moment, we have a pretty simple structure. We have only two, two pieces of information. One, the name of the item and the second is the quantity to be purchased. The data are stored in form of key value pairs inside documents. Now to add a new document to this collection, we have to get a reference of this collection first and a reference of a collection is represented by the class collection reference and that class belongs to the package cloud firestore. So first of all, we have to install the package cloud firestore on our flutter project and then inside the file where we want to write the related code, we have to import the, pack, the library cloud firestore.dart. And then we have to get an instance of collection reference by calling the function collection on the instance of the class Firebase Firestore. So Firebase Firestore dot instance dot collection and to this function collection we have to pass the name of the collection for which we want the reference. This function collection returns an instance of the class collection reference using which we can perform the different operations on this collection. So we are going to call a function named add. To add a new document to this collection and to the function add we have to pass the data in form of a map so in this example I have this form to add a new shopping item inside this elevated button inside the on press function of this elevated button I am going to write the code to add a new item to this collection so here I am going to create a map and I am getting the name and the quantity from this text form first using text editing controllers. Now I am going to put them inside this map. We are going to create two key value pairs, one for the name and the second for the quantity and I'll add these values and now I'm going to pass this map to this function add. Now save the changes and if you try to add a new item, you will notice that a new document gets added to our collection shopping list. If you click on this document, you will notice the, the data that we have entered through our form. Now let me show you how to fetch the data from a Cloud Firestore database. So we are going to fetch this list of documents and we are going to display them on the UI. So here I have a widget for displaying the list of items named item list and inside this widget first of all we have to get the collection reference. So again by calling the function collection on the Firebase Firestore.instance we shall get the collection reference and now we can either call the function get or we can call the function snapshot. The function get returns a future of type query snapshot and the function snapshot returns a stream of type query snapshots. Now what is the difference? Well the difference is that if we use the stream we can listen to the real time changes of our database of our collection. So if a new item gets added, if an existing item gets deleted or any item is updated, then we will be notified about the change and we can update the UI automatically. But we cannot do that with a future. So here to use a stream, first of all, let us create a field of type stream of type query snapshot. Because we are going to get an instance of query snapshot from the stream and from that query snapshot, we can get the list of documents. And then we can parse them and display them on the UIs. So let us create a field of type stream of query snapshot and inside the constructor let us initialize it. We are going to call the function snapshot on this collection reference and assign the result to this variable. Now we are going to use the widget stream builder to display the data from a stream. So let's add an instance of the stream builder to the widget tree. To the constructor of stream builder for the parameter builder, we have to pass an implementation of a function and this function will be responsible for creating the layout. We have to return the appropriate widget from this function. This gets two arguments. 
first is a build context and the second is an instance of a class named async snapshot and we are going to get the data from this instance we have another parameter of this constructor named stream and to this parameter we have to pass the stream so let's pass the variable that we have created and now we are going to write the code inside this builder function to display the appropriate UI depending on whether we have got an error or whether we are still loading the data etc or we have if we already get the data then we are going to display them on a list so first of all we are going to check if any error has occurred we can know that by checking whether snapshot dot has error is true if it is true this means that some error has occurred and we are going to return a text widget with the appropriate error message then we shall check if we have the data if the data has arrived we can check that by the boolean has data so if snapshot dot has data is true this means that the data has arrived and we can parse them and we can display them on the ui if none of these are true if we don't have any error and we don't yet have the data this means that it is still loading then we are going to display a progress indicator so we are going to return an instance of the widget circular progress indicator from this function now let us focus on this block so whenever the data arrives we are going to get the data inside the field named data of this instance snapshot in this case our stream is going to give us an instance of the class called query snapshot so let us create a variable of type query snapshot to hold this value now this class query snapshot has a getter named docs if we call this it will give us a list of instances of a class named query document snapshot these instances of query document snapshot represent the individual documents of our collection now we can convert this list of query document snapshots to a list of maps or some other type in this case i am going to convert it to a list of maps so we are going to call documents.map and to this function map we have to pass an implementation of a function which will be responsible for converting the data from this type query document snapshot to another type in this case a map so we have to return a map from this function in this case and this function gets one argument which is the which is an instance of the class from which we are going to convert in this case it is an instance of the class query document snapshot so here we are returning a map from this function and we are going to add a few key value pairs for the different properties of our document and we are going to get the values from this instance of query document snapshot so let's add a key value pair for the name and we are going to get the value by the key name so this name is the name of the field of our document all right Similarly, let's add another key value pair for the quantity and this time we are going to get the value by the field name quantity. And let us also add another key value pair. Let's name it ID. And here we are going to add the ID of our document. We can get the ID by, by the field, by the getter ID of this instance. So E.ID will give us the ID of our document. And finally, we have to call to list on it and now our list of map is ready and we can display it on a on the ui and for that we are going to use the list view widget and the constructor builder is appropriate for displaying a long and dynamic list of items right so let's create an instance of list view using the builder constructor to this constructor builder we have to pass the item builder function and the item count to the item count we have to pass the number of items that we are going to display so in this case it will be items dot length the, the number of items in our list and to the parameter item builder we have to pass an implementation of a function this function is responsible for creating the individual the layouts of the individual items of our list right it gets a context and the index using this index we can get the individual values of our list so from this function we are going to return an instance of the widget list style let us also get the map at this particular index and now to the parameter title of the list style we are going to pass a text widget with the name of the item 
which we can get from this map similarly to this subtitle of this list style we are going to add another text widget and this time we shall pass the quantity of the item now save the changes and here you can see the list of items so this is the way we can get all of the items of a collection but can we get the data the content of one particular document by id well yes let me show you how and for that we will need the id so first let us create a new widget for displaying the details of a shopping item and we shall pass the id from the list page because there we already have the id after fetching the content of our collection all right so we shall pass the id to the new page so here on tapping one item of the list we are going to load this new details page and while creating the instance of this widget we are going to pass the id of this particular document now inside the item details page item details widget we are going to get a document reference so to perform any operation on a document on a particular document we have to get a reference to that document and it is represented by the class called document reference we can get that by calling the function doc on a collection reference so first of all we have to get a reference of our collection itself the the way we have done previously and then on this collection reference we have to call the function doc to this function doc we have to pass the id of the document this will give us an instance of the class document reference and using this document reference we can perform different operations on this document now let us try to get the data from this document so for that we can either call the function get or we can call snapshots if we call snapshot we shall get a stream of type document snapshot this time and if we call get we shall get a future of type document snapshot this time let's try using the future so we will not be able to listen to the real time changes so let's create a variable of type future of type document snapshot and inside the constructor we are going to initialize it with the value that we get by calling the function get on document reference now to this body of the scaffold let us add an instance of the widget future builder and we have to provide values for two of the parameters builder and future the builder is responsible for creating the layout depending on the values of the values that we get from the future and to the parameter future we have to pass the future from which we are expecting the data so here let's pass future data to this future and to the parameter builder we have to pass an implementation of this function this function gets two parameter two argument context and an instance of the class async snapshot so again inside we are going to check if any error has occurred then we shall check if we have the data and and if none of these are true then we are going to display a progress indicator now inside this block when we get the data first of all we are going to get the data from the field data of snapshot right so snapshot.data will give us an instance of the class document snapshot this time because the future is of type document snapshot so the data that will be available inside the future is going to be an instance of this class so let's create a variable of type document snapshot to hold the value now if we call data on this instance we can access the content of the document as a map so we have to typecast it to a map and now let us add a column and inside the list children of the column let us add two text widgets to display the name and the quantity we can get these values from this map now save the changes and load the app now try to tap on one item of this list and here we can see the details on this details page now let me show you how to update the content of a particular document and this too is pretty simple we simply need to call the function update on the document reference and we have to pass a map containing the key value pairs corresponding to the fields which we want to update so here in this case i have this form for editing the information of a particular item on clicking this button this submit button we are going to update the corresponding document with the value which has been entered into these fields so we are passing a map containing the id and the existing information to this widget we are using the existing name and quantity to pre-fill the text form fields and we are going to use the id to get the document reference so here let's get 
an instance of the document reference we are going to create a field of type document reference and and here inside the constructor let us get the document reference we are going to get the collection reference and then we shall call the function doc we shall pass the id of the document and this will give us the document reference now inside the on press function of our elevated button we are simply going to call the function update on this document reference and we shall pass a map containing the key value pairs for the fields that we want to update so in this case we are going to add two fields for the name and quantity itself we are going to get the updated values form from this text form fields and we shall pass this map to the function now save the changes and try to make some changes here and notice the difference on the database so the corresponding information is getting updated in the document now finally let me show you how to delete one particular document by its id and for that inside the item details page on the app bar let me show a delete icon for that i'm going to add one icon button to this list actions of the app bar and inside this on press function of this icon button having the delete icon we are going to write the code to delete this document and to delete one particular document we must have the reference of that document and inside this widget we already have the document reference we are simply going to call the function delete on it now save the changes load the app and let's click on this button and here on the database notice that this item this document got deleted so with this we have learned how to create data how to read data how to update data and how to delete data from a cloud firestore database if this video has helped you then like this video subscribe to the channel and let's get connected on the comment section